But if I were to recommend one of these phones for taking portraits, it would have to be the one that has better fundamentals, and that is the iPhone. Now, one of the other things that Apple said is that the iPhone 17 Pros should have next generation portrait mode. And to be honest, I feel like I've heard this sentence like six times at this point, so I was expecting this to be a bit of a nothing upgrade. But I can actually tell the difference. So both phones take 12 megapixel portrait shots at two times magnification, but the iPhone's 12 megapixel shots are substantially more detailed. I mean, just have a look here how every bit of the texture on my shirt has been preserved here. It's also the more color consistent camera. Can you see how Samsung's added a pretty strong blue hue to my shirt, which did not exist in reality? And I wanna stress, Samsung being more colorful does not always make its photos worse. Like even though the accuracy of the iPhone is useful, it can also be kind of bland. Like if you ask me which of these two photos I would rather post somewhere, it would be the Samsung. But if I were to recommend one of these phones for taking portraits, it would have to be the one that has better fundamentals, and that is the iPhone. The detail difference is substantial, and it also feels like Apple has caught up with the one thing that Samsung really had them on, edge detection. This is something that you can tell Apple has worked on this generation specifically, because Samsung used to be noticeably ahead, but now it's starting to feel like the iPhone is just as hard to catch out. That's both for humans, but also Apple animals shockingly well. Animals that I can't imagine Apple and Samsung have sat there training their camera models on. But it's just impressive. It's pretty close to a DSLR quality background blur effect.